Carlos Castaneda December 25, 1925 to April 27, 1998 was an American author with a Ph.D. in anthropology. Starting with the teachings of Don Juan in 1968, Castaneda wrote a series of books that describe his training in shamanism, particularly with a group whose lineage descended from the Toltecs. The books, narrated in the first person, relate his experiences under the tutelage of a man that Castaneda claimed was a Yaqui, man of knowledge, named Don Juan Matis. His twelve books have sold more than 28 million copies in 17 languages. Critics have suggested that they are works of fiction, supporters claim the books are either true or at least valuable works of philosophy. Castaneda withdrew from public view in 1973, living in a large house in Westwood, California from 1973 until his death in 1998, with three colleagues whom he called, "...fellow travelers of awareness." He founded Cleargreen, an organization that promotes, "...tensegrity," which Castaneda described as the modern version of the "...magical passes," of the shamans of ancient Mexico. Early life Topic. Castaneda moved to the United States in the early 1950s and became a naturalized citizen on June 21, 1957. He was educated at UCLA BA 1962, Ph.D. 1973. Castaneda married Margaret Runyon in Mexico in 1960, according to Runyon's memoirs. Castaneda is listed on the birth certificate of Runyon's son C. J. Castaneda as his father even though his biological father was a different man. It is unclear whether Carlos and Margaret were divorced in 1960, 1973, or not at all, and his death certificate even stated he had never been married. <laughs> Career Castaneda S. First three books, The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yaqui Way of Knowledge, A Separate Reality, and Journey to Ictlan, were written while he was an anthropology student at the University of California, Los Angeles UCLA. He wrote these books as his research log describing his apprenticeship with a traditional man of knowledge identified as Don Juan Matis, allegedly a Yaqui Indian from northern Mexico. Castaneda was awarded his bachelor s and doctoral degrees based on the work described in these books. In 1974 his fourth book, Tales of Power, was published and chronicled the end of his apprenticeship under the tutelage of Matis. Castaneda continued to be popular with the reading public with subsequent publications that unfolded further aspects of his training with Don Juan. Castaneda wrote that Don Juan recognized him as the new Nawal, or leader of a party of seers of his lineage. Matis also used the term Nawal to signify that part of perception which is in the realm of the unknown yet still reachable by man, implying that, for his own party of seers, Matis was a connection to that unknown. Castaneda often referred to this unknown realm as nonordinary reality. The term Nawal has been used by anthropologists to mean a shaman or sorcerer who claims to be able to change into an animal form, or to metaphorically shift. Into another form through magic rituals, shamanism and experiences with psychoactive drugs e.g. peyote and jimson weed. While Castaneda was a well-known cultural figure, he rarely appeared in public forums. He was the subject of a cover article in the March 5, 1973 issue of Time which described him as an enigma wrapped in a mystery wrapped in a tortilla. There was controversy when it was revealed that Castaneda may have used a surrogate for his cover portrait. When confronted by correspondent Sandra Burton about discrepancies in his personal history, Castaneda responded, To ask me to verify my life by giving you my statistics is like using science to validate sorcery. Following that interview, Castaneda completely retired from public view. <laughs> Don Juan Matis Scholars have debated whether Castaneda actually served as an apprentice to the alleged Yaqui sorcerer Don Juan Matis or if he invented the whole odyssey. Castaneda's books are classified as non-fiction although they have been criticized as fictional. In two books, Castaneda 
S. Journey, The Power and the Allegory, Capra Press, 1976, and The Don Juan Papers, Ross Erickson, 1981. Author and Costaneta critic Richard DeMille intimated that Don Juan was imaginary, although DeMille's critiques have also been questioned. Walter Shelburne contends that the Don Juan Chronicle cannot be a literally true account. Other critics remain agnostic, contending that there is no proof either side of the matter. Topic. Tenskriti Topic. In the 1990s, Castaneda once again began appearing in public to promote Tenskriti, which was described in promotional materials as the modernized version of some movements called magical passes developed by Indian shamans who lived in Mexico in times prior to the Spanish conquest. Castaneda, along with Carol Tiggs, Florinda Donner Grau, and Taisha Abelar, created Cleargreen Incorporated in 1995. The organization's stated purpose is carrying out the instruction and publication of Tenskriti. Tenskriti seminars, books, and other merchandise were sold through Cleargreen. Topic: Death. Topic. Castaneda died on April 27, 1998 in Los Angeles due to complications from hepatocellular cancer. There was no public service, Castaneda was cremated and the ashes were sent to Mexico. His death was unknown to the outside world until nearly two months later, on 19 June 1998, when an obituary entitled, A Hushed Death for Mystic Author Carlos Castaneda by staff writer J. R. Moringer appeared in the Los Angeles Times, four months after Castaneda's death. C. J. Castaneda, also known as Adrian Vashon, whose birth certificate shows Carlos Castaneda as his father, challenged Castaneda's will in probate court. C. J. challenged its authenticity. The challenge was ultimately unsuccessful. Carlos Death certificate states metabolic encephalopathy for 72 hours prior to his death, yet the will was purportedly signed 48 hours before Castaneda's death. Topic: <laughs> Castaneda's colleagues. Topic: After Castaneda stepped away from public view in 1973, he bought a large multi-dwelling property in Los Angeles which he shared with some of his followers. Among those who lived there were Taisha Abelar formerly Marianne Simcoe and Florinda Donner Grau formerly Regine Thal. Like Castaneda, Taisha Abelar, and Florinda Donner Grau were students of anthropology at UCLA. Each went on to write books that explored the experience of being followers of Castaneda's teachings from a feminist perspective. C.F. Related authors Around the time Castaneda died in April 1998, his companions Donner Grau, Abelar and Patricia Parton informed friends they were leaving on a long journey. Amalia Marquez also known as Talia Bay and Tenskriti instructor Kylie Lundahl also left Los Angeles. Weeks later, Parton S. Red Ford Escort was found abandoned in Death Valley. Luis Marquez, the brother of Talia Bay, went to police in 1999 over his sister's disappearance, but was unable to convince them that it merited investigation. In 2006, Parton's sun bleached skeleton was discovered by a pair of hikers in Death Valley's Panamint Dunes area and was identified by DNA testing. The investigating authorities ruled Parton's death as undetermined. Since his death, Carol Tiggs, a colleague of Castaneda, has spoken at workshops throughout the world, including at Ontario, California in 1998 Sochi, Russia in 2015 and Merida, Yucatan in 2016. Tiggs had the longest association with Castaneda and is written about in some of his books. Today, she serves as a consultant for Cleargreen. Reception. Topic. Although Castaneda's account of the teaching of Don Juan were initially well received as non fiction works of ethnography, the books are now widely regarded as works of fiction, at first, and with the backing of academic qualifications and the UCLA Anthropological Department. Castaneda's work was mostly praised by reviewers. 
Edmund Leach praised book. Anthropologist E. H. Spicer offered a somewhat mixed review of the teachings of Don Juan, highlighting Castaneda's expressive prose and his vivid depiction of his relationship with Don Juan. However, Spicer noted that the events described in the book were not consistent with other ethnographic accounts of Yaqui cultural practices, concluding it was unlikely that Don Juan had ever participated in Yaqui group life. Spicer also stated, it is wholly gratuitous to emphasize, as the subtitle does, any connection between the subject matter of the book and the cultural traditions of the Yaquis. In a series of articles, R. Gordon Wasson, the ethnobotanist who made psychoactive mushrooms famous, similarly praised Castaneda's work, while expressing doubts regarding the accuracy of some of the claims. An early unpublished review by anthropologist Weston Labar was more critical. Labar questioned the book accuracy, calling it a pseudo-profound deeply vulgar pseudo-ethnography. The review, initially commissioned by the New York Times Review of Books, was rejected and replaced by a more positive review from a different anthropologist. Later reviews were more critical, with several critics positing that the books were fabrications. Beginning in 1976, Richard DeMille published a series of criticisms that uncovered inconsistencies in Castaneda. S. Field notes, as well as several instances of apparent plagiarism. Later, anthropologists specializing in Yaqui Indian culture, such as Jane Holden Kelly, questioned the accuracy of Castaneda's work. Other criticisms of Castaneda's work include the total lack of Yaqui vocabulary or terms for any of his experiences, and his refusal to defend himself against the accusation that he received his Ph.D. from UCLA through deception. Stephen C. Thomas notes that in her book With Good Heart, Yaqui Beliefs and Ceremonies in Pascua Village, Muriel Thayer Painter gives examples of Yaqui vocabulary associated with spirituality, morea, an equivalent to the Spanish brujo, sorino, used to describe persons with the gift of divination, and sitaka, or spiritual power, a word which is fundamental to Yaqui thought and life. Thomas further states, it is hard to believe that Castaneda's benefactor, a self-professed Yaqui, would fail to employ these native expressions throughout the apprenticeship. In omitting such intrinsically relevant terms from his ethnography, Castaneda critically undermines his portrait of Don Juan as a bona fide Yaqui sorcerer. John Diedrich, a Protestant missionary who lived among the Yaqui Indians of Vicam, Sonora, from 1940 to 1979, stated in his letter of May 23, 1989 that, I've only read the teachings of Don Juan, and before I got to the third part of the book one knew that he Castaneda did know of the Yaquis and that he had not been to the Rio Yaqui River, or that there is no terminology in the Yaqui language for any of the instructions and explanations that Don Juan was giving it to him Castaneda. Clement Maghan and Stephen C. Thomas, point out that the books largely, and for the most part, do not describe Yaqui culture at all with its emphasis on Catholic upbringing and conflict with the federal state of Mexico, but rather focus on the international movements and life of Don Juan who was described in the books as traveling and having many connections, and abodes, in the southwestern United States Arizona, northern Mexico, and Oaxaca. Don Juan was described in the books as a shaman steeped in a mostly lost Toltec philosophy and decidedly anti-Catholic. A March 5, 1973 Time article by Sandra Burton, looking at both sides of the controversy, stated, the more worldly claim to importance of Castaneda's books, to wit, that they are anthropology, a specific and truthful account of an aspect of Mexican Indian culture as shown by the speech and actions of one person, a shaman named Juan Matis. That proof hinges on the credibility of Don Juan as a being and Carlos Castaneda as a witness. Yet there is no corroboration beyond Castaneda's writings that Don Juan did what he is said to have done, and very little that he exists at all. A strong case can be made that the Don Juan books are of a different order of truthfulness from Castaneda's pre-Don Juan past. Where, for example, was the motive for an elaborate scholarly put on? The teachings were submitted to a university press, an unlikely prospect for best-sellerdom. Besides, getting an anthropology degree from UCLA is not so difficult that a candidate would employ so vast a confabulation just to avoid research. A little fudging perhaps, but not a whole system in the manner of the teachings, written by an unknown student with, at the outset, no hope of commercial success. David Silverman sees value in the work even while considering it fictional. 
In Reading Castaneda he describes the apparent deception as a critique of anthropology field work in general, a field that relies heavily on personal experience, and necessarily views other cultures through a lens. According to Silverman, not only the descriptions of peyote trips but also the fictional nature of the work are meant to place doubt on other works of anthropology. Donald Weave cites Castaneda to explain the insider outsider problem as it relates to mystical experiences, while acknowledging the fictional nature of Castaneda's work. Topic related and associated authors topic Octavio Paz, Nobel laureate, poet, and diplomat. Paz wrote the prologue to the Spanish-language edition of The Teachings of Don Juan, La Mirada Anterior The Anterior Gaze, Fondo de Cultura, 1974 Michael Corda, writer, novelist, editor-in-chief, Simon & Schuster. Castaneda's editor for his first eight books. Wrote essay on Castaneda in, Another Life, A Memoir of Other People, Random House, 1999 ISBN 0-679-45659-7 George Lucas, Star Wars. Yoda and Luke Skywalker were inspired in part by Don Juan and Castaneda Taisha Abelar and Florinda Donner Grau, both students of Don Juan Matis and colleagues of Castaneda, wrote memoirs of their experiences, Sorcerers, Crossing by Taisha Abelar and Shibono, and Being in Dreaming by Florida Donner Grau. Their books were endorsed by Castaneda as authentic works. He dismissed others who claimed to share a history with Don Juan Matis as pretenders. The two women, along with Carlos Tiggs, were part of Castaneda's inner circle, and he insisted that, along with him, they were the only legitimate students of Matisse. They were both graduate students in anthropology at UCLA. Felix Wolf, one of Castaneda's followers and translators, wrote The Art of Navigation, Travels with Carlos Castaneda and Beyond. In his book Wolf details how his life had been transformed by his association with Castaneda. While touching on all aspects of the teachings, Wolf highlights what he perceives to be the overriding and essential transmission that came through Castaneda's work, The Art of Navigation. Amy Wallace wrote Sorcerer's Apprentice, My Life with Carlos Castaneda, an account of her personal experiences with Castaneda and his followers. She died in August, 2013. In Carlos Castaneda e a Fenda entre os mundos, vislumbres da filosofia anuaca no século XXI Brazilian writer Louis Moraes analyzes the work of Castaneda, its cultural implications, and its continuation in other authors. Victor Sanchez S. first book, The Teachings of Don Carlos, Practical Applications of the Works of Carlos Castaneda Though he was never a student of Castaneda, his book provides in-depth techniques and commentary on a path of self-growth based on the wisdom of the Toltec descendants. His approach in this book is bringing the proposals of Castaneda down to the earth focusing on those parts of Castaneda's book that can be applied in everyday life and used for personal development. Bibliography <inaudible> <inaudible> Topic. The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yaqui Way of Knowledge, 1968. ISBN 0-520-21757-8, Summer 1960-October 1965 A Separate Reality, Further Conversations with Don Juan, 1971. ISBN 0-671-73249-8, April 1968 to October 1970 Journey to Ictlan, The Lessons of Don Juan, 1972. ISBN 0 671 73246 3, Summer 1960 to May 1971. Tales of Power, 1974. ISBN 0 671 73252 8, Autumn 1971 to the final meeting with Don Juan Matis in 1973. The Second Ring of Power, 1977. ISBN 0-671-73247-1, meeting his fellow apprentices after the final meeting. The Eagle's Gift, 1981. ISBN 0-671-73251-X, continuing with his fellow apprentices, and then alone with La Gorda. The Fire from Within, 1984. ISBN 0-671-73250-1, Don Juan. S. Second Attention. Teachings through to the 
final meeting in 1973. The Power of Silence, Further Lessons of Don Juan, 1987. ISBN 0 to 671 x The Abstract Course of Don Juan's Lessons, The Art of Dreaming, 1993. ISBN 0 06 Review of Don Juan's Lessons in Dreaming, Magical Passes, The Practical Wisdom of the Shamans of Ancient Mexico, 1998. ISBN 0-06-017584-2, Body Movements for Breaking the Barriers of Normal Perception, The Wheel of Time, Shamans of Ancient Mexico, Their Thoughts About Life, Death and the Universe, 1998. ISBN 0-9664116-0-9, Selected Quotations from the First Eight Books, The Active Side of Infinity, 1999. ISBN 0-06-019220-8, Memorable Events of His Life, Topic See also Topic Topic Notes Topic Topic Footnotes Topic Topic References Topic DeMille, Richard 1976. Castaneda's Journey, The Power and the Allegory. Capra Press. ISBN 978-0-88496-067-6. Topic Further Reading Topic Morais Jr., Luis Carlos de Luis Morais. Carlos Castaneda e a Fresta entre os mundos, vislumbres da filosofia anahuaca no século XXI Carlos Castaneda and the crack between the worlds, glimpses of anahuaca philosophy in the 21st century. Rio de Janeiro, Literus Editora, 2012. Sanchez, Victor. The Teachings of Don Carlos, Practical Applications of the Works of Carlos Castaneda. Bear and Company, 1995. ISBN 1-879181-23-1 Note, Castaneda won a law case requiring Sanchez to alter his book covers and clarify he was not Castaneda's student, Williams, Donald. Border Crossings, A Psychological Perspective on Carlos Castaneda's Path of Knowledge Inner City Books, 1981. Collier, Richard The River That God Forgot Background on Julio César Arana, Despotic Rubber Baron, Carlos Castaneda's Paternal Grandfather E.P. Dutton & Co., N.Y., 1968. Library of Congress Catalog Card No. 68-12451 Torres, Armando Encounters with the Nawal, Conversations with Carlos Castaneda First Light Press, 2004. Torres, Armando The Secret of the Plumed Serpent, Further Conversations with Carlos Castaneda Hade Publishing, 2014 First published in Spanish as El Secreto de la Serpiente Emplumada by Editora Alba, 2010 Desper Jr., James The End of History, A Commentary on the Warrior's Way, A System of Knowledge First Reported in the Books of Carlos Castaneda Bird Attention Publishing, 2012 Topic external links Topic An original, Richard DeMille, Carlos Castaneda, Literary Quackery, Science-Based Medicine, Wallace Sampson BBC 4, Tales from the Jungle, Series 1, Carlos Castaneda, What Happens When Anthropology Goes Bad, bbc.co.uk, 29 November 2007. Retrieved 23 January 2013. Carlos Castaneda, Mystical and Mysterious Writer, Dies by Peter Appleblebome nytimes.com. The 20th of June 1998. Retrieved the 23rd of January 2013. Mystery Man's Death Can't End the Mystery, Fighting Over Carlos Castaneda's Legacy by Peter Appleblebome, nytimes.com, the 19th of August 1998. Retrieved the 23rd of January 2013. To Carlos Castaneda, Wherever You Are by Keith Thompson bbc.co.uk, 27 June 1998. Retrieved 23 January 2013. Transcript, Carlos Castaneda interviewed by Jane Heliso of the University of California Press, 1968, UCLA YouTube audio, Carlos Castaneda interviewed by Jane Heliso of the University of California Press, 1968, UCLA Carlos Castaneda Interviews and Articles Archive 1968-1998 Federaljack.com, 5 October 2007. Retrieved 23 January 2013. Total Freedom, Toltec, Articles and Interviews Archive, Text or Audio when specified. Great-Grandma.com. 24 July 2012. Archived from the original on 3 July 2014. Retrieved 23 January 2013. Robert Marshall. 
The Dark Legacy of Carlos Castaneda, Salon, Thursday, April 12, 2007.